Ladies and gentlemen, here is Intergeo TV from Stuttgart and right now it's going to be an awesome afternoon because I have here in my studio the founder of the Geo Awesome Ness platform, you think, but right now they are just awesome and yeah, they are here. So here are Alex Dowski and Mutu Kuma. Hi and welcome. Thanks hey. for having us. Hey, Denise. Yeah, I just said it. Where is your Ness? So where ha what happened to your brand? You rebranded. So what happened to the brand, Alex? We are uh, lessness. <laughs> so so less -ness. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, we we've been in awesomeness for uh, last 13 years, and we've decided to rebrand. I mean, it's a simple change. Uh, right now we are geoawesome.com, which we believe it's a little bit simpler, simpler, uh, but it also kind of shows you no. Know, where we are going, uh, what do we want to focus on, and uh, you know, simplify things, uh, and kind of you know, makes it easier to remember, makes it also uh, go along kind of the branding uh, changes and different products and services that we are planning to launch and offer soon. You have grown up. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. I, I, I guess one of the main reasons for dropping the NES and calling ourselves Geo Awesome um, was to also signal the fact that we are more professional, even though we still want to have fun. Mm -hmm. So we didn't change the name completely. So we still believe the geospatial industry is super awesome, but it's also shorter, more professional, more customer focused. Yeah, I love it. And uh, yeah, let's talk about your yeah maybe key products. Um, what's really unique on your platform? And um, I think I remember there's one product um, that's the top. 100 geospatial list which um, yeah you, you developed or yeah you would just um, show to people every year yeah in, in fact one of the first things that we did um, this year was to promote the top 100 geospatial companies nomination phase which will start on the 1st of October at Intergeo every company we went to we were telling them about the list the fact that the nominations are free and that you can't buy your way into it but that it's decided by a panel of experts it was very nice to, to see the resonance, uh, to see how many people were like, ah, we know the list, and some of them don't know, so it was nice to talk to, to a lot of different people. So yeah, we are, we are, the nominations are starting on the 1st of October. So, so something new uh, that we are introducing this year is that every company that will be registered uh, or nominated uh, and uh, will fill in the, the registration form will actually be featured in the geospatial ecosystem map that will feature basically everyone. Uh, we'll also publish uh, it as an Excel file or Google Sheet uh, with all the information available for the entire community to, to be able to you know, share this data, use this data, uh, and uh, you know, understand that the markets uh, around it. And out of this uh, companies that will be listed in the ecosystem map, the panel that, that Mutu mentioned will decide uh, no who is the actual top 100. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have one topic or one trend, well, in any um, sector, in any industry, it's AI, integrating AI in technologies, in software. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really a very fantastic development, I think. So how do you integrate AI into the Geo Awesome platform? Do you think about that, what you can do with that? I guess one of the aspects where we probably integrate AI is in terms of using tools like ChatGPT to analyze a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So uh, to make it very simple, the top 100 form usually had a lot of questions about the basic information in terms of where is the company located, when were they founded and so on. This is a lot of information that we can now get from the internet and we don't need to ask these companies for this information. Plus, it's also much more easier for us to consolidate the market intelligence, the, the signals that we get in terms of different trends using such tools. So we can analyze a lot of websites, a lot more data, much more easily. So that's one area where we use it today a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where it's going to go in the future. Mm -hmm. and you how can it's offer the work. top 10 list next time. For example. Yeah, yeah I think this, this could be a very interesting product yeah. for many uh, industry, for many companies here. Or, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. So, I mean, the 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 other aspects uh, of AI in geospatial in general is that uh, there are there are also a lot of misinformation. There is also 
uh, a lot of myths uh, in the industry about you know, the, the features, the level of automation, uh, different services. So on the block, we are trying to five, fight with, with those myths. We are trying to also you know, kind of show the real picture where is AI in geospatial right now, and what is the potential, right? But also where it is not, because uh, there are a lot of kind of false exp expectations from the industry that you know, everything will be sorted out with AI, when in fact uh, the technology is kind of not yet there, or the uh, trust to the data that is generated to AI uh, is not at the level where we can kind of fully skip the, the human factor okay. out of it. So let's talk about Intergeo. What trends caught your attention at Intergeo this year? I'm not sure if I would call it a trend, but one thing I was really, really happy to see was the democratization of surveying. Because surveying uh, is a very special subject and I think I'm now probably going to annoy a lot of hardcore surveyors, but one trend that I see is the fact that you don't need a lot of surveying knowledge. You know, you have devices that are automatically leveling themselves. You basically don't need to set up anymore the device, so you could just put it in the middle of the room and in 15 minutes you can start surveying, even if you don't have a lot of surveying background and knowledge. I'm not saying that it's for every use case, but the fact that it's enabling people who don't have a very strong surveying background to do surveying, I think that kind of changes things. That's one trend where I'm kind of very happy because then it grows the, the pie, the number of people who can do geospatial analytics and services like surveying and stuff. Okay, the democratization of surveying. Yeah. Okay, so what caught your attention? The same, do you agree or anything else? So for, for sure I agree, right? There is a lot of drones, there is a lot of earth observation, there is also a lot of, you know, as always, uh, surveying, but one uh, part of the value chain that, that caught my attention was actually related to data processing, data analytics. So I see much more presence from software companies that are actually enabled to process and integrate different data sources with each other. So actually to extract knowledge and information uh, from those uh, different uh, devices, different uh, uh, sensors and I mean the, some of the features that I've seen were really amazing and uh, I mean I, I will certainly use some of those in my daily work. Maybe as an addition, that's also another trend. Intergeo used to be a very hardware focused event. There were a lot of new hardware products being announced but now it's also more software releases. There are more companies that focus on software solutions as well. So that's also an interesting and positive development. It's not just this year, also last year, and it's getting more and more software as well. So that's oh. also really cool. One question I really like is what you like most at Intergeo? I guess talking to you <laughs> tops the list. Yay, hooray! <laughs> this is on the top, and the second one okay, is so happy hour. Okay, we don't hour. need the exhibition. <laughs> okay, we just need the exhibit night, and we need here Intergeo TV, that's all. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And some good coffee in the press center. For sure. <laughs> no, what you like most, is it's a community or is it just global brands combined with startups and new technology and so on? Or what you like most? No, for, for, for me, uh, I, it's, I think it's my seventh time that I'm uh, mm -hmm. on the Intergeo. I like that everyone who should be here is here. Right, so for me, it's walking around, talking directly to the product teams, talking directly to actually people uh, that are you know, behind uh, those product services, offering, asking them direct, direct questions. So actually spending two or three days on Intergeo gives me much more than you know, s uh, spending one month doing online research. This is really kind of the aggregation and accumulation of knowledge that is here. It's really amazing. I guess adding to what Alex said, it's, it's the networking expert mm -hmm. so that you get to meet a lot of people. But what's also amazing is how many new companies are entering the space every year. So it kind of feels like you know a few people, so you do meet familiar faces, but also you meet a lot of people who are new to the geospatial industry, who are experiencing it for the first time. So it's a nice mix of excitement and standard people from the past. 
Super. So thank you very much for giving us a dear awesome Interview TV news broadcast this afternoon. It was very nice to see you again. I hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for having us, Dennis. Thanks so much.